Just yesterday, Eddie Hearn said we are days away from an announcement. He said all terms have been agreed. The contract is agreed. It just needs to be passed around for everybody to sign. He said the only thing they're trying to sort out now is what location the fight is going to take place in. And it's likely to be overseas somewhere. Frank Warren, the day before that, said an announcement is imminent. He said that Tyson Fury has peed off about the delays and what have you. But again, he's very positive about it. He says an announcement is imminent. And he basically echoes all the things that Eddie Hearn said about everything being agreed. A few days prior to that, Frank Warren said it again, that all the terms are agreed. But yet Tyson Fury is saying there's no fight until there's a ton of money in my pocket. He sounds very negative about it. He's saying that he might fight Deontay Wilder next. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes, which could scupper the fight. He basically said the fight is nowhere close to being done. This is what Tyson Fury said. Now, we all know that Tyson Fury is someone who likes to play mind games. So how do you interpret the situation at the moment with regards to Tyson Fury saying the opposite to his own promoters, Bob Arum and Frank Warren, never mind Eddie Hearn? How do you interpret that? Could it be that Tyson Fury is simply getting cold feet about the fight because he has been so inactive? If they fight in June, Fury would have been out in the ring for a year and a half, whereas AJ would have only been out in the ring for six months. Yeah, just over six months. So is it that? Perhaps it's the Deontay Wilder situation. Some people are speculating that maybe Wilder's team have got some legal traction and they're going to be able to block this undisputed fight from taking place. That could be another possibility. Others have said that perhaps Tyson Fury is just playing mind games with Anthony Joshua. And what he intends to do is surprise him at the last minute and say, haha, actually I've signed a contract and it is happening. Maybe he wants to lure Anthony Joshua into a full sense of security and give the impression that he's actually scared to fight. Or another option, which I haven't heard anyone else consider, is that Tyson Fury is actually at odds with his own team. Perhaps there's something in these contracts with regards to Frank Warren and Bob Arum that he's not happy about. Maybe he is having a dispute with his own promoters. Who knows? Perhaps it's a bit of all of the above, but it's very frustrating for boxing fans, certainly for myself, because we just want to see these guys get in the ring and settle the score. Now, Tyson Fury, in recent interviews, is looking very slim. He says he's not training anymore. He says that his trainer, Javon Sugar Hill, went back home in December. There was an interview that I saw where he said that, in fact, is it here? Yes, this interview. In this interview, he said that he hasn't done any training for a long time. And then when he was asked the last time he sparred, he said yesterday. So Tyson Fury, as usual, is full of contradictions. You don't know what to believe. And Tyson Fury may be a freestyler a lot of the time in terms of what he decides to do. But he has this innate tendency to use misdirection. You know, he gaslights people a lot, Tyson Fury. I mean, I was nearly going to say he's, he's as bad as the potato in a wig in Westminster for gaslighting and as bad as the, the mainstream media for gaslighting. But no, I couldn't put him on that level. <laughs> but um, yeah, Tyson Fury does gaslight a lot. And I don't necessarily think it's a coldly calculated thing. I just think it's more pathological. It's part of his personality to do that. It's part of the... Tyson Fury's art of war, you know, throwing people off the scent, keeping them, keeping them guessing, not just his opponent, but the public as well. I think Tyson Fury likes being that way. I think he likes the idea that people find him unpredictable and can't guess what he's going to do next. So let's see what happens here, people. I am a glasses half full boxing fan. Most of you know that by now, who've been following my channel for any length of time. And the miserable boxing fans are very upset 
with somebody like me who always wants to look on the bright side, who always sees the glass as half full rather than half empty. Because some people are just miserable by nature. This is why they never get anywhere in life. Miserable by nature. And they hate to see anybody who's positive. <laughs> they, they absolutely hate that. It's like Arsenal fan TV. I always go back to this. We used to have Ty and Claude. And you got a bunch of Claudes out there who are going to get themselves an aneurysm with how upset they are about the world. And that manifests... And when I say the world, obviously the world is in a terrible state, right? <laughs> we're, we're all upset about that. But I'm talking about their lives more so than the world. They're really upset about their lives. Uh, even prior to 2020, they were upset about their lives. And they project that through their behavior on boxing. They're always complaining about this or complaining about that. Oh, box is not what it used to be. Oh, it's so terrible. UFC is so much better. This is the projection of how they feel about their lives. Seriously, this is human psychology 101 for you people. <laughs> but whereas I'm somebody who looks at all the positives in boxing, I don't hyper-focus and obsess about the fights that haven't yet happened. I'm thankful for the fights that have happened. You see it. And we are on the brink of a massive fight if this fight happens, you're still going to have these jokers running around talking about, oh, boxing is terrible. Oh, God. That's just how they're wired. That's why they, they get nowhere in life. That's why they can never be happy in life. Because they are mentally predisposed to being miserable. <laughs> you know, positivity is contagious just the way negativity is contagious. Remember that. This is why in. Uh, the theater of battle, they try to keep the morale of the troops high because troops who are even in the midst of battle laughing and joking, they're going to be more effective. If you've got a bunch of troops who are miserable, down, af afraid, you know, scared, they're going to be far less effective. So morale among the troops is very, very important. You've got to keep people laughing and joking, even in desperate situations. You have to. And that can be the difference between winning and losing in life in general. It's just having a positive mindset. And at the end of the day, what's it going to cost you? Don't cost you anything. It's a choice. Are you going to feel defeated and negative? Or are you going to feel positive and happy? You're still in the same situation, right? If you're in a bad situation, either way, what, what's going to help you more? Being negative about it and just resigning yourself to defeat? Or being positive, that might even if it only gives you a 1% extra chance of overcoming the odds, it's still something and it's better than nothing, right? Anyway, <laughs> let me stop lecturing about a PMA, positive mental attitude. This ultimately is out of our hands. This uh, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua fight. Well, I guess people could put pressure on Tyson Fury on social media and what have you, but is he really going to capitulate to that? Maybe, maybe. But let's just hope that we don't need to put pressure on Tyson Fury and that he's going to sign this contract of his own accord. And look, as I said in previous videos, Tyson Fury being as inactive as he's been through no fault of his own, really, and I'm talking about over the past 18 months, that is going to affect him. I mean, it's not going to help him, is it? <laughs> You've been out the ring 18 months and your opponent's only had six months out the ring. It's definitely a benefit to your opponent. So that's going to help Anthony Joshua and it's going to hinder Tyson Fury. The problem with Tyson Fury is that he can't be honest most of the time and just come out and say things like, okay, I'm not ready to fight right now. I want a tune up before I face Anthony Joshua. I've had too long out the ring. He's not honest enough to say that. He's going to come up with some next excuse, try and gaslight the public again. And this is where people have the issue. For me personally, if he was just honest about it and said, look, I need a, a tune-up fight because I've been out of the ring too long, I would have no problem with it whatsoever. I wouldn't criticize it at all because it's perfectly legitimate. One guy is only six months since his previous fight by the time they get in the ring or so, six or seven months. The other guy is going to be 18 months. 
obviously, like, there's an advantage there for one of the guys. So I'd have no issue. It's just the fact that Tyson Fury often just cannot bring himself to be honest with the public. He's so concerned about this perception that he's the gypsy warrior and he'll fight anyone at any time and he'll turn up at your house, fight you on your doorstep, or you can turn up to his house. You know, all this kind of stuff. The machismo. Um, Tyson Fury really shoots himself in the foot with all that. And it was the same when David Price was mandatory for his British title. Tyson Fury was coming out with a whole heap of excuses, which very few people at the time bought because he didn't have a fan base anywhere near as big as the fan base he has now. But now, you know, I struggle to understand how his fan base could be defending the stuff that Tyson Fury is coming out with. As I say, if he just came out and it, 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 that's assuming this is the issue. It might not be the issue. Maybe it is a situation with his promoter. He's not happy with Bob Arum or Frank Warren. Maybe it's mind games. Um, you know, who knows? But assuming it's actually him getting cold feet because he's worried about being ring rusty, just come out and say it. Yeah, I certainly won't hold that against him. It's a perfectly legitimate reason to want to have a tune-up fight. So uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this whole situation. And by the way, Tyson Fury looking very trim here. So he's clearly been training very, very hard in anticipation that this fight could take place. Looks slim in the face. And even if you look at him here, as I say, looks very trim, much more trim than we saw him a few weeks ago. You know, when he was <laughs> jumping into a freezing cold sea, I tell you, he's a brave man, Tyson Fury, a real brave man. Jumping into that freezing cold water a few weeks ago. Looks much more slim now. So uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide range of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&A sessions, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalogue of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app, with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got a Discord server where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. There's no contract, no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.